Hey guys, it's Rory and I'm back with the next episode of Kerbal Space Program Hardcore. In this one, uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to start off our space station and, uh, you know, put the first bits up there without Kerbals, probably. Um, but first of all, let's take a look at where we're at with our satellites. So, down here, um, don't worry about that, that's just me testing some settings and things for mods, um, so don't worry about that being there. But uh, we do have three satellites in nearly perfect geosynchronous orbits. Uh, that is not quite a hundred percent perfect, I don't think. I think their um, orbital period is maybe a you know a few seconds off, but that's all. And they're all in a very similar orbit, so they shouldn't drift off, and they're in a triangle as well. So these should give us coverage around this whole area here, which is obviously very very useful. Anyway, if we come out of this the editor scene, hopefully, there we go. Let's see if I can time warp until daytime. There we go. There we are. And uh, okay, looks like it's time to start designing the first part of our space station. Then, so the first part of the space station, um, I think. It would be a good idea if it was just a sort of connector almost where we can attach everything else onto. Um, a sort of central piece. Uh, and I'm, I'm also thinking we might want to have the cupola module on there. So I think I'm going to start off with that for now. Um, so we want a cupola module so that we can actually attach, um, so that we can actually, you know, have like a, a start to the station, a place where Kerbals can command from. We're not going to put a Kerbal in it yet though. Um, and then, I guess we could probably do with, uh, where are we? I guess we could probably do with one of the joints which attaches loads of things together. Where are they? Here they are. And I th I'm not 100% sure whether we need any sort of spaces in here or anything. Let's give this a shot. Yeah, see that's not the cleanest of connections there. So we're going to need um, some kind of adapters or something in there. Actually I'll try the small one, uh, where is it? Not that one, the bigger version of that. This one, here we go. I'll try this. I wonder if that gives it enough space. Oh. Let's give that a shot. So... Oh, okay. So that's just duplicating it so I didn't have to go and get another one of those. That was kind of silly. That seems to actually make it okay. So we can deal with that. Um, obviously I'm not actually just going to attach stuff straight on that. But I am going to use a few of these. Uh, can, can we attach these in symmetry, I wonder? No, symmetry doesn't work with those. Uh, so we'll have to attach them all manually. Actually, what might be an idea, now that I'm thinking of it, is to attach the... Where are they? The these things. Here we go. And then we can just duplicate that part. Attach. Duplicate. Attach. Duplicate. Attach. And duplicate. And now I've got to work out that. There we go. And attach. And that should be quite a strong little start to the station. Um, so most of the station is going to be sort of this width. I uh, hope. Maybe some of it will be a slightly thinner width, but we'll see. And the other thing I'd like to attach in here is actually a probe body. Um, I would like one of the large probe bodies to be attached there. And uh, I guess it'd be a good idea to attach the, um, where are we? One of the big antennae. But not actually, this isn't actually gonna have people or kerbals in it, but it also won't actually be powered for the first part. We're just going to dock to it with it unpowered. And um, it's almost going to be like debris to start off with, I think. Um, so where are we? Uh, let's see. What would be the best antennae for this? It doesn't need to be a very big antennae. This, that will probably do, actually. Um, as it's going to always be visible by the satellites, and it would be useful to not have to worry about which antennae we're using too much. Uh, you know, about pointing it in the right direction. So I think I'm going to go with that. Um, I go with a few of them in symmetry though, 
because that could always make it look a bit cooler. Like that. That looks pretty awesome. So if I have four of those on top, we're never going to have to worry about communication. That won't be an issue. And this is actually going to be in a, um, a low carbon orbit. So, let me have a look. In fact, we're not going to attach one of those. So, apart from that, what will we need on this station? Probably not too much on this first part. Uh, as I said, it's not going to need power. The power is going to be supplied by other parts of the station. It doesn't need RCS yet. Um, once it can get up there and then point itself north, uh, so we don't have to worry too much about that, then it should be okay on its own. Um, and the rocket's going to do most of that for it. So now, uh, I guess Kerbal Engineer would be a good thing to attach, a flight unit for Kerbal Engineer. Um, so we've got one of those on the station. On the rest of the parts, I think I might just add them to the rocket that's launching it. But on this one, I'll keep it, um, keep it right there. And let's see. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, I'll get the compact version, because I'm playing in 720p at the moment. Uh, in fact... No, let's not go for the compact version, it's not that useful. Okay. Uh, what's the button? Page down, there we go. And now I can look down a little bit more, so I have a bit more space to look at the uh, the craft itself. So that should be okay. Um, it might be an idea actually to add a couple of RCS ports to it, so that later on when we have RCS, it will actually be able to use it. Um, but I don't really want to add too much more than that, to be honest. Uh, because there's not really anywhere else to add it. So, uh, let's have a look then. Okay, so I think we're okay to build the launcher. And this is going to have to get to sort of low curb in orbit area, so we want around 4,000 meters a second of delta V to be safe. So we can adjust our orbit a little bit if we need to and so that if we don't make the launch as efficient as possible the first time around, it doesn't matter too much. So, uh, to start off with, I'm going to go with one of the Rockamax decouplers, like that. And then I'm actually going to go with one of the probe bodies. And actually while we do this, while I remember, I'm going to remove the kerbals from there. And now, I think we're okay to start building rocket beneath this. So I'll see how it goes with this kind of, the two meter parts to start off with. Uh, we'll have to add a fairing later on, but I just want to get the basic idea of the rocket down for now. So, uh, let's have a look. If we were to go with a skipper, how much delta V would that have? That would have enough delta V and enough thrust to weight ratio actually. Um, pretty much. That looks pretty good. Uh, obviously I'm gonna have to add the fairing to that, so that's gonna take away a little bit. But apart from that, it's not too bad. So, I can add the fairing in there. The fairings, if you don't know, I just added um, with these parts here. And I guess I'm gonna have to put that fairing right here, so it's the fairing base ring. Before I put it down, I'm going to make it the right size. And uh, this fairing is going to have to go around it, like you see there. So I'm going to use the egg shaped one, because I think those look a bit nicer. They're a bit more kerbal, I think. Uh, and let's decrease the extra radius until we can't see anything, just like that. This isn't going to be terribly aerodynamic, actually. Um, <laughs> oh well, it doesn't really matter too much. So after that we need the probe body, and then it's going to be a good idea to have the, or to have a antennae, and we just need a little one to get us the first, well the range on this is 500 kilometers, which is absolutely fine uh, for now, so that'll do. Um, I wonder whether we could, no the thrust away ratio actually looks okay. Mm. I'm tempted to add 
another little bit of fuel in there. Let me see what's the atmospheric stats. See, the atmospheric stats aren't quite what I want them to be. Uh, let's get a another little tank here. I think that might help. Yeah, there we go. So now, is this the atmospheric stats? That's the, okay. Yeah, that's that's more than enough now. That should all be good. Uh, good to go. Now let's just get some fins to attach to this to make it uh, to make it a bit easier to control and to add a bit of drag actually at the back. Where are my favourite fins? Uh, are they across here? Yeah, they are. So these fins are my favourite ones. I'm going to add a lot of them because with this, it's going to this isn't going to be a very stable craft. I can already see just from the shape of it basically. So what's this called? This is the Space Station Command mod Module. And what is it? The Kerbal Space Station, the KSS Command Module. There we go. And uh, what are we going to do about these? The staging. I think I'm going to attach a couple of the launch clamps because I like those. That works, three of them. So we want the engines to activate first, then the launch clamps to go away, then after that we're going to split this off, then after that we're going to split that off. That looks good to me. So without any further ado, I'm going to give this a shot. Uh, yep, everything's looking good. So let's go to the launch pad. Yeah, we recovered a couple. Well done. I'm going to drink my tea. Right, so here we are with Kerbal Engineer with all of the information that comes with it. I don't think we really need any of this, or all of this uh, at the moment. I don't think we need that. That information might be useful though, so I'll keep that there. And uh, yeah, let's activate the engine and throttle up, turn on SAS and split off. Now this craft has a slightly higher thrust to weight ratio than the last one we launched so gravity turn wise I'm I'm not 100% sure I think we need to take off uh, a similar place but maybe let me think maybe a little bit earlier altitude wise. Still I'm just gonna do the same launch profile if we end up a bit higher in our orbit then I'm I don't mind it doesn't bother me. So I'm going to turn off the SAS now and just pitch us over just a touch. Now I need to be very careful with this rocket because of obviously the shape being not the most aerodynamic. Um, and now I'm just encouraging it a bit to pitch over because it obviously isn't turning as fast as the last one from what I can sort of feel. So I need to make sure it starts to turn off properly. Um, and now I can feel it's starting to do it on its own so I'm not going to I'm not going to um, interfere with it too much for now. Uh, this should be an okay launch from now on. And there we go, the apoapsis height's going up, the inclination is going up, so I'm going to pitch back to try and, or uh, yaw to try and decrease that. So I'm trying to pull us away from that inclination because I don't want to have an inclined orbit, that's not ideal. Uh, less than one degree is good though, and we are less than one degree at the moment. And there we go, we've started to get a decent orbit, so that's that's all good. And the inclination is all under control, apoapsis height is fine for the moment. Uh, there's a bit of wobble, I'm going to try and cancel that out with manual control there. And there we go, we're getting up into a respectable orbit. Uh, starting to build up that horizontal velocity now as well. So. There we go. Nobody complained, by the way, about the lack of editing in the video, so I think I'm going to keep doing that for now. It's a, it makes um, it makes this a lot more effortless. And actually, uh, you know, I did mention the bit rate of the video, which is means you know how long it's going to take to upload. Basically, um, it's like how how much storage it uses up per second. And the bit rate of the video was actually about a quarter of what it would be if I rendered a video in Vegas in the same quality. That's how good open broadcaster software is doing, how good a job it is doing. Um, 
of this. Anyway, so you can see the f y axis height's getting up there now, up where we need it to be. Um, I think we're going to aim for a uh, 75 kilometer orbit for this thing. So I'm just going to burn up a little bit. There we go. A 75 kilometer orbit is absolutely fine. Inclination of about one degree, we can fix that later. That's fine. We've still got a lot of fuel left, and you'll see this orbit is very elongated because we did a very efficient gravity turn. So we're also completely happy with that. Uh, so now it's time to split off the fairing because there's no atmosphere really slowing us down now. And um, I'm going to activate these one of these antennae if I can. There we go. Uh, let's get rid of that for now. There we go. So now we should be able to get a connection out to here, which we can. So that's all good. Um, so now I can just time warp basically until we get up to this apoapsis. And I can use SAS now. Um, SAS is definitely going to be useful for now. Uh, we do have plenty of electric charge, I believe, so I'm not worrying too much about that. So let's just um, go up until our time to apoapsis is, you know, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. The circularization burn will be very short though, because of what I was saying earlier um, about the orbit being very elongated. Um, there we go. Oh, we actually have food in the cupola module as well. That's funny. So yeah, that's the other thing we're going to have to add, uh, which I mentioned earlier, I think, in the last episode which is the life support mod. Anyway, there we go. We've done our orbit for now. I'm obviously going to want to correct this a bit because it's not quite perfect. Um, and to do that, I'm going to put a thrust limiter on the engine to, let's say, 20%. That sounds good. So the apoapsis height is a little high, and since we're about to be at our periapsis, then I can get ready to burn retrograde to fix that, um, which is good. So I want a 75 by 75 kilometer orbit, pref preferably, uh, preferably, however you want to say that. 75 by 75 looks about right. Uh, so now I'm going to take a look at, uh, well I'm going to set the moon as the target, because that gives us our ascending and descending node. And uh, ascending node, we're at one degree out, pretty much. So I'm going to go there. And remember, if you're at your ascending node, you that's when you start to go up. Um, well, that's, yeah, that's the point at which you cross over the plane and you're going up. So that's when I need to burn south, um, or about south. So, let's get ready to do that. We do still have enough electric charge for now, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. And once we've done this, we can ditch the, we can, you know, deploy the, um, the actual station. There we go. Let's watch as the inclination goes down. 0 0.6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. That's pretty much perfect inclination wise. So, um, I can actually drop that off. There we go, switch back. And, oh, all well, the electric charge was left in the other thing. Well, this is going to float here for a bit. I'm sure we can find a way of deorbiting it or something. Yeah, that's a bit of a pain though. I wish it kind of balanced the electric charge when you did stuff like that. Anyway, not to worry about it though. We can get rid of it another time. And yeah, that's that's it. I think this is all deployed and ready to go. I'm going to turn SAS off. Um, but yeah, this is going to run out of electric charge. It's almost going to become become debris, um, but which which is fine because you know even the first two parts or a few parts of the International Space Station actually. You know, we're left up there without humans there for a very long time, for a couple of years, I think. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. Uh, just so you can see, this is where we're at the moment now. And yeah, as always, as I said, thanks for watching and have a nice day.